Hello and welcome to another midweek message. It's five past six Wednesday morning. This will be available later this episode in about an hour's time after I've had my coffee. <laughs> the weather, first of all, the weather report. Absolutely fantastic weather here yesterday. Really hot. I think it reached, what was it, about 25? Uh, it's a bit difficult to tell under our patio roof. That's where the thermometer is. It's a bit like a greenhouse under there. It did reach 45 a couple of summers ago, far too hot. I built the roof a few years back, mainly to keep the rain off the, the patio. So we had a, a bit of an area, even in the summer, where we could sit, even though it's raining. But it does get very, very hot under there. Now today I can see over the South Downs looking beautiful, clear blue sky. The trees, I can see the treetops frozen, as in a photograph, not moving, absolutely no wind whatsoever, not a breath of wind, which is brilliant. I don't like the wind. Now, moving on. Oh, by the way, this Friday, it could be 34 degrees. Just heard on the radio. Could be 34 degrees, which is great. I mustn't complain because every winter, Trish tells me off. Oh, I'm cold. It's too cold. I wish the summer was here. Then we get to the summer. Oh, I'm hot. It's too hot. Oh, I'm too hot. <laughs> so I mustn't complain because I get told off. Now, last Sunday's episode was all about politics. Well, not all about politics, but a lot of it. I, I tried not to go too deep into politics because it's, as I said on Sunday, it's divisive and it causes arguments. Loads of emails and messages from you all. Thank you. I'm not going to read any of them out because there are just too many and it would just take too long. As I said last Sunday in the episode, it is a very divisive subject. We've got uh, all this Rwanda business. The flight um, has been cancelled, hasn't it? The flights to Rwanda. We've got the, the rubber diggies coming across the channel. We've got rail strikes all coming up. I mean, there's just so much going on. It's impossible to keep up with it all. Thank you all for all your emails and, and messages. Fantastic. It's really nice to hear from you. It just makes me realise that I'm not talking to myself. I do wonder sometimes, <laughs> is anyone listening? Is there anybody out there? That's another. I must stop to quoting lines from records. Right. This Sunday, I thought we'd have a bit of a chat. I will mention politics this Sunday. I will mention not any emails, but just the general consensus, things like that. But mainly on Sunday... I want to talk about communication. Oh, no, you'll say, oh, not radios, not ham radio again. No, 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 not that. Communication back in the 50s. How did people communicate? I mean, apart from talking face to face, obviously. Telephones. Now, not everyone in the 50s had a telephone. So on the corner of a lot of roads, not every street corner, but not far off, there was a telephone box always within walking distance, a red telephone box. Do you know, when I went to California, goodness me, that was back in 75. How about that? 1975. Some of you weren't even born then. <laughs> I went to California, Los Angeles. Fantastic. There for three weeks. Brilliant. I saw the odd red phone box here and there. I remember outside a restaurant, outside a bar, red phone box, all looked after, painted red, looking really nice. And I heard, the reason I mentioned this, I heard on the radio recently that in areas where you have your mobile phone, you call them cell phones in America, don't you? The mobile phone, there are areas in Britain where the signal is either weak or just totally non-existent. <laughs> so what they're saying is, I'm, I'm not sure whether this is a government thing or whatever, but what people are saying, I think in government, you must have a telephone box where there's no or very weak mobile phone signal. If there's a telephone box there, a red telephone box there, you, you have to leave it there or put one there. Now, as I always say, don't quote me on this because I get all this stuff from the radio and the internet and the television, and it's a bit like Chinese whispers. You know, by the time I relay it to you, it's probably totally wrong. But that's interesting. Now, the thing is, here's the thing. Now, here's the thing. Our car... Now you're thinking, what's that got to do with communication? No, 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 listen. Our car, no spare wheel, right? No spare wheel. So we, we're in the Isle of Wight. We used to take the four grandchildren when one of them was only, what, six months old. So we've got a baby with us. What happens if, in the middle of nowhere, some country lane, we break down? I can't change the wheel because our car doesn't have a spare wheel, as so many of the rubbish cars don't these days. They're just grey plastic. Oh, no, don't set me off onto that again. So what happens? 
you have to get on your mobile phone and call your breakdown service. Now, you've got to be careful. A lot of breakdown services don't deal with flat tyres. Luckily, punctures are rare these days. So what happens? You've got the kids in the car, they're crying, they're tired. What are you meant to do? I mean, even a red phone box wouldn't help, to be honest, if there's a red phone box down the road, because who do you phone? So you've got to make sure that your cover, your breakdown cover, does actually cover a flat tyre. I don't know what people are meant to do. That's progress for you. Anyway, communication. Back in the 50s, a lot of people didn't have a phone, so they used the red phone box. Their only form of communication, really, you know, incoming communication, like the news, was the radio. A lot of people in the 50s didn't have a telly. A lot of people I know in the 60s didn't have a television. So it's all about communication, what people did, newspapers, things like that. If you've got any ideas, email me, raiserants at protonmail.com. As always, brilliant to hear from you. And in the meantime, I'm going to put my shorts on. We're off to the wetlands, um, the wild, what is it? The wild fowl wetlands place at Arundel. We recently became members there. So we're going to hop in the car. It doesn't open till 10. We're going to hop in the car and drive in the heat through Arundel where there's always traffic jams. <laughs> oh dear, happy days. I shall see you all on Sunday. Take care, behave yourselves. And don't forget to email me. Bye-bye for now.